you know what's been fascinating to me? Have you guys at all tuned into twitch.tv slash Mike Ross in the last like week? A, l- a little streamer named Mike Ross popped up and he started streaming fighting games. He started streaming Guilty Gear and he started streaming uh, Tekken 7 very recently. I've had a lot of interesting revelations about fighting games and the fighting game community and how people learn games and stuff. But man, I gotta tell you, this is one of the most interesting ones that I think I always knew, but didn't realize and like conceptualize until now. He's been streaming a lot of Guilty Gear, learning a new character. While streaming Johnny Trials, he said something along the lines of, I think the only game that's almost as bad or worse than Street Fighter V is Tekken 7. That game is trash. That's what he said, right? And everybody was so upset. They were like, how could you? We trusted you. You were the chosen one, you know, they were like real, like, oh my God, I couldn't, I can't believe he said that. Mike Ross said such a crazy thing about Tekken. That game's incredible. Who, who'd have thunk it? Then like three days later, he was like, you guys want me to fucking try this Tekken game? Let me turn it on. So he put the game on. <clears throat> he looked at the move list and he said, hell no, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? If I looked at the move list, I probably would have done the exact same thing. Then he got back in and he gave Tekken 7 uh, another try. And since then, he's been an absolute degenerate. He like can't turn the game off. He's been playing it nonstop. And I think seems to enjoy Tekken 7 quite a bit. What I realized when watching this whole thing go down is that I think that this exact situation has happened with thousands of other fighting game fans. I realized that Mike Ross is just one of many other people who never really gave a lot of other fighting games a try until recently, like a real try, where you sat down and just tried a lot of other different games. Especially the part where he was like, fucking Tekken is trash, that game's horrible. And then he gave it a try and was like, wow, this game's actually pretty fun. (laughs) That is a lot of people in fighting games where they have never tried or been interested or like not a play it on the side, mess with it once, that's kind of fun, but like a real like, let me give this game an honest shot, kind of a try before, you know? And I feel like that's a ton of people. I got into fighting games back in 2009. I started going to locals in 2013. I had to wait until I was out of high school. I didn't have enough, you know, I couldn't drive to the arcade when I was in high school. My parents wouldn't allow it. But then I got out of high school and I was going to college. I started going to locals. When I went to locals, I remember Back in 2013, people would tell me, they'd be like, oh, whatever game I was playing, you know, Injustice or Chaos Time, whatever game I was playing, they'd say that game is trash. And that game is easy. They used to tell me, the Street Fighter players at the local I went to used to tell me, Street Fighter was such a better game. And not only was it a better game, but Street Fighter was so much harder that if they, the people going 0-2 at the Street Fighter local, got into KI or Injustice, they'd probably win it within two two weeks or something like that. This is the kind of uh, normal, uh, you know, opinions people used to have back in 2013, right? This is not an co- uncommon thing. Looking now and thinking about the fact that all of those people don't even play Street Fighter anymore. I see a lot of them playing other games all the time, and I haven't seen them play Street Fighter in a long time since then. It's very interesting to see how the opinions of, of people have changed from 2013 to now, when in between that period, some way and some moment, they did exactly what Mike Ross did, which is they said, this game's trash. And then they said, well, let me give it a shot. And they gave it a shot, and then they were like, holy shit, this game is actually incredibly good. Or this game is actually super fun. And I think I never realized until now that there's so many fighting game fans that never really gave lots of other games an honest try. Where they sat down and they wanted to learn it, they wanted to get into it, they wanted to figure out what made this game unique, what made this game as fun as, let me eat you dropping the Twitch Prime, thanks very much. What made this game fun, what made this game unique, what made people enjoy it, like what are the good and bad parts about it, how does it differ from whatever fighting game you're playing. Especially, yeah, someone brought up the recipe, Back when Steve and I did that, stuff like that is what I think makes people realize that it's okay and it's really fun to mess with lots of other games. Even if you're not good at them, you should totally try out other games because the one thing you'll realize about fighting games is that when you try out other games, it will do a few things. For Number one, learning another fighting game will change the skills you have to develop as a player. So when you learn a new game, you have to learn new skills. And these new skills, whether they be execution or mind games or the way you like um, have to think about fighting games will change because of the kind of fighting game you're having to play. Like when you have to play Guilty Gear, the execution you have to have is very different. And the speed you have to play and the decision you have to make is very different than something like Street Fighter. So like when you start bouncing around from all these different games, you start learning different skills, you start learning different mindsets, you start learning how to change the way you think about fighting games. 
and uh, you might run into a problem. You know, when you're playing and learning, you hit plateaus all the time, right? Where your, your skill is increasing and then you stop because you run into something. Skill is increasing and then you stop. There's moments like that in every game you play. And figuring out how to get around plateaus in every game takes skill building and it takes recognition of the issues you have and then boom, you go up. And I think like doing that in multiple games will make you realize like how much better you get as a player each and every time. Steve and I would play these games, right? And I would learn Guilty Gear from Steve. And you'd watch Steve, and he plays some random character. He plays Answer, and he's just beating the shit out of people and having a blast. And then I play, and I've never played Guilty Gear in my life. And I play Soul, and I'm losing to some other guy who's brand new. And then eventually, at the very end, I win one game. And we're like, let's fucking go. And like the excitement in Steve's episode is, Jesus Christ, look at how bad Steve's clowning this guy. But the excitement in my episode was, oh my God, he got a match. You know, because I was new, I was learning, it was fun. And that was the same thing when we played KI, it was flipped. I'd play KI and I played a literally a different character every single set and I beat the shit out of everybody. And then we went to Steve and Steve played an Agonos player who put up four walls to troll him and punched him through it. If you took the Guilty Gear episode of Steve playing and the KI episode that I played, those are fun. But I think really the ones people enjoyed were the ones where we were teaching each other our fighting games and we got each other to try different games and stuff like that. But that's why I like learning new fighting games on my stream. That's why I loved streaming Eunice on my channel, right? I played Eunice yesterday and it was funny to watch, to read the chat now when I play Eunice compared to reading the chat when I was first beginning. Because now people are like, damn, how long has Sejam been playing Eunice? How long is this? And when I first started, my chat room was like, Jesus, Sejam. You are getting the shit kicked out of you. You you are a trooper for keeping it together. You have to understand that all of us are trying to learn. You know, he was at the, the whoever I'm playing is at the same point that I was a few months ago when I was learning the game. We're all kind of just trying out new games, learning together. Just like I'm learning to thank FGM Seth for dropping the Twitch Prime. Thanks very much. All of us now, especially, are learning all these different games at the same time. And so you can really just go around and jump between all these games and learn different skills and meet different people in different communities and have fun trying these games. And what's important to me, and one of the main reasons I started learning a lot of games was to understand these games when I watched them at events. Back in like the, you know, 2014, 2015, when I was playing a couple of games and I started following other games, I realized that when I gave other games a shot and learned them a little bit, what ended up happening is when I was at tournaments, I would watch those games that I gave a shot and dabbled with a little bit and I would understand what's happening better and I could appreciate the gameplay of it or appreciate the mind games of it or how good or bad or crazy decision making and players are and stuff. It was, yeah, it was great. For me, I've always been a multi-game player. I've never been someone who just plays one fighting game. But now it feels like almost everybody has realized that, you know, trying out different fighting games is fun. And dude, yeah, someone brings it up. So the, like the first day Mike played, he played some guy named Fake Out and Fake Out beat him like 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 or whatever into to zero. Then he played that guy and last night he beat him 10-9. And like the feeling you get of going from, I'm just getting the shit kicked out of me by some guy to becoming, to playing that guy and improving to then barely beating them in a first to 10. That's what you you want as a fighting game player. Have a rival slash training partner that you play and you get better and then you guys keep going and they used to kick the shit out of you but now the matches are close and then now it's back and forth to seeing yourself improve. It took a lot of people realizing that they didn't like the current Street Fighter to jump to another game and give it a shot. It was just so funny to me because I remember back in 2014, I stopped having fun playing Injustice. Right, I was an Injustice slash KI player, and I stopped having fun playing Injustice. So you know what I did? I just stopped playing it in tournament, and I started playing Street Fighter Four instead. Immediately, I felt way happier about what I was being like, what how I was as a fighting game player because I just the game that gave me a lot of hate, hatred. It made me upset playing it. I just stopped playing it, and then I played something new, and I learned it, and I enjoyed it. These are all things that I feel like I learned and figured out very quickly into playing fighting games, but now in 2019 is like this new phenomenon blowing everybody's mind. Yeah, I used to love Injustice 1. I loved the shit out of that game, but after playing it in tournament for like a year and a half, I thought I was gonna fucking lose it. I couldn't believe how frustrated that game made me. So I just stopped playing it. I was so pissed too, because I was at the point where I wanted to not play it anymore, and SCR came up. I only entered it because I was like, fuck it, I'll give it a shot. Whatever, I'll just enter it, right? And I remember I had a winner's top eight qualifier match for KI and I lost. And then right after that, I made top eight in Injustice. And then I had to play my loser's top eight match for KI. And I remember like 
thinking to myself, if I make top eight in Injustice and not KI, because I don't give a shit about how I do it in Injustice, I only care about how I do it in KI. If I make top eight in Injustice and not KI, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. That's how I felt about the game. And that's how I knew that it was time for me to play something else. This game is pissing me off so bad that I'm not even happy that I'm doing well. I feel like that's such an easy thing that people should be able to recognize, you know? And it's just funny to me because when I say some something like, dude, if you hate or, or dislike some game, just don't play it, play some other shit. People think I'm I'm kidding. Like I went through the exact same thing that you went through, you know? I'm like, dude, I was right there with you. People always say like, yeah, I'm really unhappy with like X or Y game I'm playing now because I think the balance sucks, but I don't want to get into Tekken because it's so hard. And it's like, okay, well you have a game where you don't think the balance is good and it's making you miserable. And then you have a game that takes time and effort to get into and you're just spending more time and effort here. If you just took some time away and just stopped playing this and played this for a month straight, you'd be 100 million times better than you were last week. What sucks is when the games have great communities, but you don't actually like the game. I think that that's a fine scenario to have to, to be in. You know why? Because you just go to the events and you hang out with the cool people that you've met, but you don't have to play in the tournament. You can just hang out, hang out with the people, play a different game, go get food with them and shit, hang out at the whatever locals or tournaments or events you're at or regional. They're still your homies. Just because you don't play the same game anymore doesn't mean you're not homie. Not all of us are winning Evo over here. Most of us are just hanging out with friends and enjoying a hobby that we all really like, right? It is hard to get beat up and then want to keep playing all the time. But at the same time, like, it's the fun part about learning. Getting beat up and being like, what the fuck was that? And then you look at it and you figure it out. And then the next day you get, you see that same situation and you just beat it. You like, stop it. You like, are clear, this is trash. It's not even real. And you blow it up and you're like, I'm so fucking good. You know what I mean? That's all it takes. Mike was playing a different game for two years. Yeah, but it took a it took a, lo a push to get him into Guilty Gear too. When we shot the recipe before we started or during one of the breaks, I was learning and he sat down and he played a little bit and he was like, I remember he said, he was sitting there and he goes, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. This game is so good. I should play this game. And it's funny because like it took him sitting down and, and putting some hands on the controller and playing the game to realize that, you know? But I think a lot of people, it does take sitting down and putting your hands on something to feel like, you know what, this game is cool and I should give it a shot. And even though he has been playing Guilty Gear for two years, he still like was a little hesitant to try Tekken, right? I don't blame him. Tekken is, you know, that clip of him opening the move list and quitting out of the game is pretty funny, but I think it's also an extremely accurate representation of how a lot of people feel when they turn on Tekken. Like a lot of people laughed about it, but I think that that clip is some of the most damning shit you can actually post about Tekken 7. That's not even as somebody who's new to fighting games. Like this is somebody who's played other fighting games before. That's like the most accurate representation I can think of, of what it's like to turn on Tekken 7 for the first time and just be like, what the fuck do you mean? There's no tutorial in the game. There's nothing that teaches me the game. I'm supposed to just look at the move list. There's 124 moves, what's good? I guess at the end there's sample combos and stuff. And also most of the moves are also listing out strengths. Like one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, three. Like, you know, and lots of people are just like saying Street Fighter player can't learn Tekken or Tekken play. Like they're talking shit. And it's like, come on, guys, you got to be honest about this. As dope as Tekken is, that's a bad. It, it's bad that the first thing that happens when you jump in the game is that you load up the game. You're like, go to training mode, you pick a character, you think the character looks cool, okay, how do I go from here? And it's like, well, you gotta look up a YouTube channel and hope that whoever uh, out there makes content happens to play the character you play. Like, I, A lot of people told me when they first learned Injustice, they were like, I didn't know what the fuck to learn, but you had a Nightwing tutorial, so I picked Nightwing because you had a tutorial on how to play him. <laughs> Imagine that. They're like, I don't know who the fuck to learn, but there's a tutorial for this character. And because there's no tutorial for no other character, Fuck it, I guess I'm gonna learn that character. <laughs> to get into Tekken, you either need to go to YouTube or another site and look up guides or tutorials, find a Tekken Discord, go to the Discord, find the channel, find whatever guide or information is posted there, or you know whatever, and that's not including just general Tekken things. How does crouching state work? How, what are, how are while rising or while standing moves work? You know, what's, what's the knockdown situation? What are all your options when you get knocked down like, feet first, like away or, or head first away. Like it matters what character you are, what options you have. Does my character have back turn moves? What's a screw? <laughs> How does Tekken neutral work? You know, there's all these different things that you have to figure out as a player. And that's not even counting just knowing what moves are good with your character.